The 80-20 rule is real, but it only manifests itself, it only reveals itself if you start with the shotgun approach. Nomadic Chad here, this is Revenue Operations in 10 minutes. I got a wife and a baby in a hotel, so pardon me if I have to run outside and rescue a baby. What are you doing? So, I was reading uh, Perry Marshall's 80-20 work, and it's great. And But the thing is, I wanted to point it out to you guys in the sense of um, your Twitter ads and Facebook ads. So, and this seems so obvious, which is why everyone dismisses the 80-20 stuff, but when I ran the Twitter follower campaign, I don't, I don't, I didn't pretend that I'm some amazing copywriter. I didn't pretend that I'm a, some amazing marketer and like write the perfect ad copy, which as a small digression, that it, that stuff baffles me when like, um, I was watching Dan Locke last night, Dan Loke, and he's like, yeah, I learned a $10,000 a month skill, which was copywriting, which great, learn the fundamentals of copywriting. But even Perry Marshall, he says now he's been a marketer for uh, over 20 years and he's still got a 50-50 success rate. And by success rate, I mean in like guessing. So I'm split testing two ads right now as an experiment to my wife. One is a picture of us in New Orleans with the, uh, the bridge behind us. And another one is a picture, it's us in Tulum. So it's like, guess which one's gonna, gonna do better? And, and you know, everyone has their opinions, but you won't know until the data shows you. And then if you were to run 10 of these, the 80-20 principle will dictate that two of them will send you 80% of your traffic or two of them will have 80% uh, uh, of the click-through rate, you know, however you, however you want to measure that. So I wanted to demo this, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not set up in the hotel yet. But on the Twitter side, I threw 15 different separate tweets at that. And then you just run it for a day and I go through it. And any of them that weren't hitting that 14 cents per follow cost metric that I want, you dump it. And then you can start looking at ones and you see that there'll be one or two that significantly outperform all the others. And that is the real key to success. That's the real actual success secret to direct marketing is it's the ability to test, it's the ability to trial, trial and error, and it's the recommendation to put your ego down and don't actually think that you, you're, you've got the best words in the world. Like just swapping two words makes a difference. Changing a headline, um, going from fear to pleasure to to ugly picture to pretty picture. Like we think we think a hot girl on the ad's gonna sell everything or or a smiling face is gonna sell. And sometimes it's the weirdest little like um, that that uh, body fat loss one which was like ugly, ugly ad campaigns. They win oftentimes. So the, and I am gonna do a demo on this when I get set up in the next hotel because I want you to see. Right now I'm running Facebook ads again on the on the ClickBank front ad offer, but it's a mystery to me. I don't I don't actually know which one is gonna win. So the most important part of this is to uh, launch as many of them as you can, you know? Don't don't just sit there with one and start fine tuning everything. So I've got two which by the way, Facebook has take taken so long to approve ads uh, ads in their ad sets. So I've got two, but my goal is to have five to 10 and then to keep spinning that up. Russell Brunson has a good story about that too when he compared his ad set to Dean Graziosi and they didn't know why his book funnel was working so much better. Look at that, there's a baby in the baby in the mirror. Um, and then when they finally looked it over, the only main difference was that Dean Graziosi had a shit ton of media. So that's, and, and that's my takeaways now also even later in my years after having done this also for 20 years off and on at least on the ad side of it i used to really go in there and just try to write two good ads and then split test them and everything felt fun because you're split testing but now that twitter one really helped me to just to throw that shotgun approach out there and then let 80 20 reveal itself so don't get stuck on 80 20 like it's some like it's some you know, it's a business lever. It's a lever that you can pull, but really it's the 80-20 reveals itself to you. And then it's your job to shift everything to the right. So to get rid of your laggards and to let your top ones really perform. And then the exponential power of the 80-20 really takes off. So let that sink in for a little bit. We'll talk more about that. I'll point down to some of Perry Marshall's work, but really it's about shifting all that to the right. So dropping your laggards and then trying to beat your best performers. And what you will find, in fact, um, Peter, uh man one up on wall street 
love this guy as a writer. He calls them the 10 baggers. And his whole point is you only, you only need one 10 bagger and you're rich. So keep hitting those, keep going for those base hits and then cut your losses quick on the ones that don't work. And then when the 10 baggers come in, you're rich. And that's the same, it's the same thing that works in the direct marketing sphere. Cut the laggards, keep trying to beat the top one, and you're gonna land on one that just hyper converts. And then you scale the thing as, as hard and fast as you can and keep going. So, moral here wrapping up. 80-20, it's a real thing. It's like gravity, it's a, it's a law of physics. It's just a phenomenon that happens everywhere we see it. However, you can't just go into this and think that you're gonna drop 80-20 into play. What you really do is go with the shotgun approach, put so much out there that you allow the 80-20 to reveal itself. And then as the 80-20 reveals itself, you double down on what's working, create more of that, and you cut the laggards. Nomadic Chad here. This is Revenue RevOps in 10 minutes, and I will see you in the next one.